Hey, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this 3D softbody animation in Blender 4.1 on a MacBook Pro, M1 chip, and 16 RAM. So it's finally time for an upgrade on my MacBook so I can make better videos for you. So this is my request for you guys to help me save for a new one. And it's completely free for you. Just watch the whole video, like my videos, and that's it. I made a video of this animation four months ago, and I don't like how the video is edited. So here is a new version of that animation. So in this video, I'm going to use my all-time soda can. You can now download my 3D soda can model for free. Link in the description. So first start with set up the blue blend file. So press A to select all, then press X to delete it. So if you are using my free 3D model soda can, I'll show you how to import that model. Go to the file and click on append, then find your downloaded file and click on that. Click on the object, select the middle soda can and click on append. Press option plus G to center the object on the 3D cursor. Then press S plus 0.65 to scale it down a little. Then press control plus A to apply the scale then change the end frame to 90. Now let's set up the bubbles. Press Shift plus A to add a round cube. Then here on the left corner, you can change the shape of the round cube and then change it to the quad sphere. This is how you enable the extra mesh objects. Go to Edit, then click on Preferences. Go to Add-ons and search for Extra Mesh, and then check the Extra Mesh, and here you go. So this is why we are using the quad sphere instead of the original UV sphere. And as you see in this video, the sphere is not completely smooth and round, and this weird thing in the middle appear. But when we use the quad sphere, it's round and smooth like we want, then press G plus Z to move it up on the Z axis. Then press F2 to rename it to Bubble. And for Mac users like me, press FN first, then F2. And now go to the modifiers and add a subdivision surface and change the viewport to 2. Then right click and click Shade Smooth. Let's set up your collision. So we are going to make a mesh. Because our soda can is too detailed or whatever, I don't know why exactly we creating this, but I saw it on another tutorial, so press 1 on your numpad to get to the front view. This is how you enable the numpad for laptops. Go to Edit, then click on Preferences. Go to Input and then check Emulate Numpad. So press Shift plus A to add a cylinder. Then press the Tab button to go to Edit Mode. So this is the Tab button just right over the Caps Lock. Press Z to change Shading Mode and select Wireframe. Then press S to scale it down a little bit. And I scale this much as you can see here on the left corner. Then select the top circle. Then press E to extrude it and move it up. Then press E plus S to extrude and scale. So like you guess, we're going to make a mesh that is traced by our main mesh. So I'm going to speed up this process, but continue to make the mesh. Then press A to select all the vertex. Then press Option plus S to scale to the normals. Then go to object mode by hitting the tab button and then rename it to collision. Then press Z to change between the shading modes and click on solid. So this mesh will be our collision and will not be seen in the result video. So let's make it wire in the viewport. So go to the object selection, unfold the viewport display and change the display as to wire. And if you want, you can right click and make a shortcut for this. My shortcut is the letter J. Select the collision and then press shift and select the soda can. Then press control plus P to parent the collision to the soda can. And to see if you did it the right way, select the soda can, then press G to move it around. And if the collision follows around, you did it the right way. So let's change the rotation for the soda can. Press 1 on your numpad to get to the front view. So press N to unhide the sidebar. Then change the X rotation to minus 17.6. Then change the Y rotation to 0.78. And last, change the Z rotation to 11.6. And now let's jump to the soft body settings. So select the bubble. And then press S plus 0.8 to scale it down. And then go to the physics and then click on soft body. Then hit the space bar to play the animation. And as you see the bubble float up and down, but we want it to fall into the collision. So uncheck the goal, then select the collision and click on the collision and leave it like this. Then play the animation by hitting the space bar. And like you see, the bubble falls, and then it's destroyed. Now unfold the edge. 
and check the stiffness, and then change the bending to 5, then unfold the cache, and change the end to 90, and if you play the animation you see the bubble fall out into the nowhere. Now unfold the field weight, and change the gravity to 0, and when you play the animation you will see nothing happened, so to fix that, press Shift plus A to add a force field, then press S plus 0.9 to scale it down, then press Control plus A to apply the scale, then change the strength to minus 1, and when you play the animation you will see the bubble collied with the soda can and it not fall into the nowhere. And like you see in the result video, it has more bubbles and they are colliding with each other. So to do that, select the bubble. Then click on collision and make sure the collision is over the soft body selection. Then press shift plus D to duplicate and then press S to scale it down. So I'm going to speed up this process. And don't worry, I'm going to show you the location and scale for my bubbles so you can make the exact video animation I made. But make sure you have eight bubbles. So now, let's set up the location and scale for our bubbles. So make sure you select our first bubble and change the X location to 5.2 and then change the Y location to 4.3 and last change the Z location to 0.5 and leave the scale on 0.8. Now select our second bubble and change the X location to minus 4.6 and then change the Y location to 2.2, and last change the Z location to minus 6, and then change the scale to 0.8. Now select our third bubble, and change the X location to minus 1.9, and then change the Y location to 1.4, and last change the Z location to 2.7, and then change the scale to 0.5. Now select our fourth bubble, and change the X location to 2.3, and then change the Y location to minus 3.7, and last change the Z location to minus 2.5, and then change the scale to 0.5, and then select the fifth bubble, and change the X location to 3.5, and then change the Y location to minus 4.4. And last, change the Z location to 4.8, and then change the scale to 0.6. Now select our sixth bubble, and change the X location to 3.3, and then change the Y location to 0.6, and last, change the Z location to minus 5.5, and then change the scale to 0.8, and then select our seventh bubble, and change the X location to minus 5.8, and then change the Y location to minus 5.7, and last change the Z location to 4.8 and then change the scale to 1. Now select our last bubble and change the X location to minus 2 and then change the Y location to minus 6.4 and last change the Z location to minus 3.5 and then change the scale to 0.6. And now it's time for baking time. But before we do that, select all the bubbles, press M to make a collection and rename it to bubbles. Then go to the scene. Unfold the rigid body world, then click on Add Rigid Body World, and unfold the cache, and change the end to 90, then click on Bake, and wait for the baking to bake. So I'm going to speed up this process, but for you who wondering, the baking time took me 59 seconds. Let's play the animation by hitting the space bar, and this is what we have now. I think this looks good. So let's set up the soda can material. So it's finally time to make something with this boring soda can. So we can make something we can use in a video. So in the description, I link my label texture. I also link the video how you set up the label texture. So let's set up the bubbles material. Open a new window. By holding your mouse over here until this symbol shows up, then drag the new window that way you will until the new window show up. Then click here and change the editor type to shader editor. So select the second bubble. Click on new and rename it to bubble purple. Then press Z to change to render. So I'm rending in cycles. So go to the render settings and change the render engine to cycles. And if you have a GPU device, go and change to that and change the noise threshold to 0.1 so you can render faster. Also change the max samples on the render to 300, then unfold the color management, and change the look to high contrast. Now let's set up the HDRI, so go to World. Click on this yellow dot and select the environment texture. Click on Open and choose you HDRI image. In the description I linked the HDRI I used, so download that. And now change the base color, and if you want to use the same color, I use the hex is C791C1. And then change the transmission to 1, and that's it. And then select the bubbles 4 and 5. And then last the bubble, we just created the material. Then press L to link the material so the other also have the same material. Then click here to select the material we just made. And then click here to copy the material. 
and then rename it to Bubble Blue, then change the transmission to zero again, and then change the color, and if you want to use the same color I use, the hex is 0Z16FB7, and then change the roughness to 0.3, and now select bubble 6, and then the bubble 3, then press L to link the materials, then click here to select the material we just made, and then click here to copy the material, and then rename it to bubble gray and then change the color, and if you want to use the same color I use, the hex is D1D1D1. Then select the bubbles 7 and 8, and last, the bubble 1. Then press L to link the materials, and then unfold the soda can. And then click here, so the collision does not been seen in the result video. And now let's set up the camera. So press Shift plus A to add a camera. Then press Shift plus A to add an empty plane axis, and select the camera. And change the Y location to minus 35. Then select the camera, press shift, and then the empty object. And like you see here to the right, the camera should be red and the empty should be orange. Then press Ctrl plus P to parent the camera to the empty object. And then click on the Keep Transform. Then select the empty object and rename it to Camera Controller. Press 0 on your numpad to go to Camera View. And then go to the Camera Settings. And change the focal length to 125 millimeters. And then unfold the viewport display. And change the Pass Part 2 to 0.8 so we can see a little bit of the viewport and then unfold the composition guides and check the thirds and center for SOM guidelines. Then press Shift plus A to add an empty plane axis. Press 3 on your numpad to get to the side view. Then press G plus Y to move it on the Y axis. Then press R to rotate like this. Then press G plus Z two times to move it diagonally on the Z axis. Then press G plus Y two times to move it diagonally on the Y axis. Then go to the constraints and add a shrink wrap. Then change the target to the soda can so the empty is attached to your object. And now rename it to camera focus. And then click here so you can easily select the camera. And then check the depth of field and change the focus object to the camera focus. Then change the f-stop to 0.4. And then change the camera's Z location to 1.19. And don't panic, I know it does not look good, but we are going to fix that now. So let's doing the fun stuff and animate the camera. So select the camera controller, and then go to frame 1, and then change the Z location to minus 1. Then right-click and insert a single keyframe. And this little orange thing is a keyframe. And change the X rotation to minus 4.6, and then change the Y rotation to minus 4.7, and then last change the Z location to 6.9, and then change the scale to 0.83, then press I over rotation to insert a keyframe, and do the same thing for the scale and then go to frame 70, and then change the Z location to minus 1.12, then right-click and insert a single keyframe, and change the X rotation to 4.89, and then change the Y rotation to minus 4.46, and then last, change the Z location to minus 25.3, and then change the scale to 1, then press I over rotation to insert a keyframe, and do the same thing for the scale. Let's play the animation by hitting the space bar, and this is what we have now. I think this looks good. So are you ready for the result? One, two, three. And here is my results. Thank you for watching, and I hope you like my tutorial. And if you do a video of this animation, go and publish that on Instagram and tag me, amalin.mpeg4. Comment down below what I can make in the next video and with the editing and all that thing. And feel free to subscribe for more tutorials and videos.